Hello there. You may recall a while back when penguins were everywhere in popular culture. And this was prominent during a period when three films about penguins were released around the same time. Considering how long documentaries and animated films take to make, and these were likely being produced at the same time, it wasn't a case of one trying to get in on the success of another, but rather due to pure coincidence. Rio even changed its original storyline about a penguin who washed up on the shores of Copacabana because of all these penguin pictures opening up. So let's look back at these three penguin adventures, beginning with an unassuming little documentary. March of the Penguins came out of nowhere and was very successful, and it's not hard to see why. Admittedly, it's a pretty standard nature documentary, as we follow a flock of penguins in Antarctica. Yet the filmmakers managed to make it interesting throughout the entire running time. And we even endear ourselves to those birds at some point. It manages to show how they take care of their young, as well as the dangers they face, especially with predators. Interesting enough, the original French version had actors actually voicing the penguins. Of course, as is widely known, Morgan Freeman narrated the English language release and did a pretty damn good job of it too. Enough that we now associate him with narrating as much as his on-screen acting. Overall, you really have to admire the filmmakers, including director Luc Jacquet, for braving the Antarctic cold to bring these penguins' daily lives to our attention. Plus, penguins are absolutely adorable, so what's not to like? Meanwhile, George Miller, the producer of Babe and director of films like The Witches of Eastwick, was inspired to direct an animated film about penguins upon finding out they made it by song, and he pondered the idea of what would happen if a penguin wasn't able to sing. The result is Happy Feet, a fun, stunningly animated musical with a sweet love story on the surface. I like the themes it presents, and Mumbles is a likable lead. The musical numbers are fantastically directed and provide the best moments of the film, whether they be the songs or the dancing from Mumbles. I like the community Miller and his team create for the Penguins, and the humor provided by one of Robin Williams' characters actually provides a nice bit of comic relief. I know a bit of contention for a number of people is the environmental message that appears in the final third, and admittedly it does throw that in your face, especially since the beginning of the film doesn't entirely build up to it. It certainly would have been better if it was just Mumble's personal journey. With that said, I do like the finale a lot, with the penguins all tap dancing together. Since its initial release, the popularity of Happy Feet has gone down, but I still think it's an imaginative and well-told story that was deserving of its Oscar for Best Animated Feature. Then again, that was a weak year of animation in my opinion, and my favorite animated film of 2006 wasn't even nominated. I also very much like the less acclaimed sequel, which I personally thought topped the first one as it seemed to tone down the environmental message, I got a real kick out of the prawn side characters, and the decision to center on a single location was a clever idea on Miller's part. That element added further tension and excitement to the story, but unfortunately it didn't do quite as well box office wise. Overall, I think Happy Feet holds up nicely as a very good and entertaining animated film with some stunning animation. In terms of penguin love stories, I certainly prefer it over the similarly plotted The Pebble and the Penguin. A number of months later, Surf's Up was released. I don't know whether people were just tired of penguins at this point, or the marketing wasn't up to speed, but this film did not really grab people when it came out, and still doesn't seem to be talked about. However, I think it's a great, underappreciated gem, and my favorite from Sony Animation's still small library. Done in the style of her surfing documentary, it gets the format down perfectly. It doesn't merely go the office route by imitating a handheld camera. The way it's edited, mixes the footage and interviews together, and even the story structure is like directors Ash Brannon and Chris Buck actually went out and filmed a documentary about surfing penguins. Owing to the format of Surf's Up, even the animation and screenplay are very down-to-earth and are a far cry from the more cartoony action seen in Sony's other animated features. There's a real mellowness and laid-back quality to Surf's Up. If this script was turned down by Sony, the filmmakers could easily have made it as a live-action indie film, as it has that similar feel to it. This is further helped by the voice acting. Shia LaBeouf, Jeff Bridges, and Zoe Deschanel are all cast for their comedic abilities, 
rather than name recognition, as they do note perfect jobs in voicing their characters. Both Cody and his idol, Big Z, are likable characters with interesting flaws, and the interaction is a lot of fun. Even the comic relief chicken, voiced by John Heater, has his own funny little side story. If you have not seen Surf's Up yet, I highly recommend it. This is one of the most pleasant surprises I've ever sat through. In conclusion, while the penguin craze does seem to have cooled down by now, no pun intended, watching these free flicks, it's understandable why the public was so enamored by them. They are all solid and creative films that are a great showcase for what makes these Antarctic birds so special and likable. See you next time.